Thank you. Bye bye. All right, we're glad to have you here. <laughs> uh, you introduced the the movie for the the people in the, in the auditorium, right? I did indeed. Yes. And how was that? It was great. The uh, the crowd has been amazing. I heard that they were sleeping out um, outside in the queue yeah. from four o'clock this morning. So it's great to since, feel. Since yesterday. Since yesterday. Yeah, they yeah. got here ten o'clock in yeah, the night. It's amazing, and it, you know it's. It's exactly why Pete makes these movies. He makes them for the fans because he's one of them. And I've been one of those guys. When Lord of the Rings was on, I was out there cheering. And uh, so it's amazing to, to get to be part of it. And everyone seemed Misty Mountains. How was that? Do you know what? I, I, it took me a while to figure out what it was they were singing. Otherwise, <laughs> I would have joined in. Yeah. Uh, can you sing a little to us? Because Tiago, that, that works with us, he says, oh, please ask him to sing a little of Misty Mountains. Far over the misty mountains. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and there's a lot of people yeah. cosplaying as uh, as a Thorin, right? There was, yeah, there was one guy who was uh, who was dressed as Thorin. You could have put him in the movie. His costume was that good. Yeah. <laughs> and how was this contact with the Brazilian fans? Say again. How was this contact with the with the Brazilian fans? Have you ever imagined that your Brazilian fans? would be like this? No, as I said in the room, you know, um, the German fans are extraordinarily enthusiastic, but the Brazilians are giving the Germans a run for their money, I have to say. The, the, the enthusiasm, the way that they've dressed up and come along and supported us. I mean, look at the guys behind us now. They're, they're, <laughs> they're amazing. Can uh, you give a hello to them? Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, see. <laughs> and, and I believe you, you received as a gift uh, a T-shirt from the the team, the soccer team from from Brazil, football team, right? I did. Um, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign it, and we're gonna have run a little competition mm -hmm. um, for one of the fans. But we we haven't figured out what the competition is yet. But it was amazing. All right. Uh, you know why it's the number ten? Uh, I heard all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Is he the best player on the field, or is he it, the captain? Actually, of the it's team? not the best player. Is Basically, uh, it's always the captain. The captain. Yeah, because we had uh, on the World Cup, like Pelé was number 10, yeah. uh, Rivellino and Zico, all the most famous players, they, they always are the number 10 on our football national team. And now Richard Armitage is also, uh, is also number 10. Shall I, shall I take that as a compliment? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I will. <laughs> all right. So uh, it's the end of this journey. Uh, how was that? Uh, doing three movies and throwing says a central uh, part in this in this third one because of the madness of the mountain. Uh, how was that experience for you? It's really rare to get the opportunity to play one character over three movies. You know, one story um, which is told effectively over three years. It's really unusual, and and uh, it's been great because we've been able to slowly introduce the audience to the character and play the character in in a kind of drip feed. Um, so the final moments of the uh, of the battle, we really care about him. And what are you going to miss about New Zealand and about all this journey? I'm going to miss the Pinot Noir wine, although I, I, it's, it's widely available. Um, <laughs> obviously, it's the most beautiful, amazing country landscape-wise, but it's the people that I'll miss the most, um, the friends that I made, the dwarves that, that came together, but Peter and Fran and Philippa and their family, because they, we, they made us feel like one of the family, for sure. And you think we're going to see another... Tolkien adaptation in the future? I don't think you'll see, I don't think you'll see another one from Peter Jackson um, if the film rights become available, because they're not available at the moment. Everything that is available to be filmed has been filmed. Um, but if they do become available, I think The Silmarillion would make an amazing television series. Oh. And, and Peter now is putting together the expanded version of the film. Do you know what kind of what parts are, are in it, or is not figured out yet? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of very very exciting scenes that didn't quite make it into the to the final movie mm -hmm. um, but you don't notice it it wasn't until after the film had finished that I realized the scenes were missing so I th I've got a feeling that the extended cut will be around four hours long mm. four hours long four, yeah. yeah is that most uh, dramatic part dramatic parts or action scenes um, there's a couple of action sequences there's a little bit um, of extra fighting but there's also a very key scene which I can't tell you about because it will spoil the story for people that haven't read the book. But there's a key scene at the very end of Thorin's story, which is missing. Um, and it, it was very beautiful. It was a beautiful set. And uh, I think that will be something to look forward to. Mm -hmm.
and everybody in Lord of the Rings and movies in general, they, they get to keep something from the set. Uh, uh, I believe that Elijah Wood and Andy Serkis, they kept the ring. They got the ring from Peter Jackson. What did you re receive or did, what did you get from the, um, the I was given Orchrist, the sword that I used during the oh, fight, yeah. Yeah. and the Oaken Shield, and the map and the key. So I have a lot of goodies. Um, the thing about the map is that it's the one that I used uh, in the film, and it's got my um, fingerprints, which are soaked in blood on the map. <laughs> All right. Which is very cool. Ele falou basicamente aqui, a gente, we're going to translate a little, because yeah. uh, not everybody speaks English. Uh, o, o Richard Armitage, ele disse aqui que ele ganhou a Orchrist, que é a espada que ele usa, numa das cenas do filme, numa das cenas climáticas. A gente perguntou o que, que ele ganhou do set, porque tem muita gente que sempre ganha um presente quando filma O Senhor dos Anéis. Ele conseguiu ficar com a Orchrist, entre outros presentes, ele ficou com um dos mapas. Ele ganhou um monte de coisa lá, porque todos os atores ganham alguma coisa. O Elijah Wood ganhou um anel, o Andy Serkis, quando fez O Senhor dos Anéis, ele também ganhou um anel. E ele disse aqui que a recepção das pessoas é incrível. E eu expliquei para ele por que ele tinha ganhado a camisa 10 do Brasil. Ele não, enti, não tinha entendido direito, apesar de ser inglês, ele não tinha entendido por que ele ganhou a, a camisa 10 da seleção brasileira, que agora ele ganhou aqui e ele vai assinar, que a gente vai dar num, num concurso que a gente vai fazer. So, uh, what do you have, um, Fury Project? Do you have something? I believe you're going back to theater, right? Um, I already did that this year. Um, the, I, I was on stage through the summer in The Crucible, which we filmed and actually will be, I believe, on a kind of worldwide release to download early next year, perhaps mm -hmm. around February time. Um, I'm producing something of my own, uh, which is based on a, a true story. It's, it's going to be set and filmed in Ireland in the 18, late 1800s. It's a true story. Um, and I'm also going to be doing a thing called Pilgrimage, which is about, uh, it's an 11th century story of a crusade to return a holy relic to Rome. So, and I'll be mm -hmm. speaking ancient French. Ancient wow. French? Yeah, and which I, I've never spoken before, so that'll be fun. <laughs> and how, was, how is going to be the process of learning that? Or I have how you no are idea. <laughs> 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 okay, and well, more about The Hobbit. Uh, can you say like a scene that was really memorable to you that you're going to remember? Forever. Yeah, I think the build-up to the battle um, on the battlements was something I remember very clearly. And it's interesting seeing the little comments that are coming up on the screen <laughs> because a lot of people are saying, I will not have war, I will have peace. And it's, it's one of the things that I, I think was really interesting about the movie, that Thorin's kind of stubbornness and his pig-headedness and his short-sightedness um, gives rise to war, which was it, it's such a dangerous situation based on the opinion of one man. And I think it's one of the lessons that Tolkien is kind of maybe teaching the children that he was reading this book to. So the moment where he says, I will have war, is just such a turning point and one of my favorite scenes. Mm -hmm. um, there's a key scene, dramatic scene, when Thorin is in the mountain, uh, when he realizes all the madness. Uh, how was that shot? Was that uh, green screen or was that difficult to, to shoot or was like one day one day that shoot. was um that was the biggest experiment of the movie for me um in the script it was rig it was just a stage direction it, and the stage direction said thorin sees his own reflection and realizes what he's become that was the only thing that was written on the page and peter came to me and said i don't really know how to shoot this do you have any ideas and and i said well not really but let's let's build a green set with a ramp um and we'll try and we'll just try and do something so he put music on I had some stunt guys that tied ropes around my ankles and they, I was trying to wade through the gold and then I was trying to climb the ramp and they were pulling me back. So it was, I didn't, I had no idea what, what he was going to do with it. So that was the one experiment of the movie. All right. Um, uh, Lord of the Rings, the, the French is, is always famous by, by the fellowship of the actors that uh, come together for, for shooting this because it's a long shoot and it's, they become kind of a family and you get to know New Zealand and the wines and everything. Uh, What's the, the most uh, valuable thing that, that you learned from the, the castmates that you had there and the, the, the dwarf company and the, the friendships that you end up making there? I think, I think I really honed the art of patience because, you know, when you're there for such a long time and you, you bond very quickly uh, and you get tired of people quite quickly and you know, it's a very intense filming process and we were all, you know, uh, most of the time hot and uncomfortable So learning how to tolerate my friends and, and just be supportive <laughs> of them before I, you know, headbutted them was, uh, was you know, a big lesson to me. 
And is there like a process of rehearsing? With because in, in movies like this is scale, they are so huge, and you don't have like uh, weeks to to rehearse and get to to know each other. Uh, what was that like? Did you get to? Did you believe that you get to really know the, your your teammates, uh, your the other dwarves, or was like uh, well? That is basically a CGI movie, and you have to to fit in. We don't don't have a lot of time to learn what you're doing. How was that like? We we had a, an eight week dwarf boot camp right mm -hmm. at the beginning of the shooting. So we learned how to move like a dwarf. We learned how to move in a kind of military way because they wanted the dwarves to feel like a military pack. So we did lots of improvisation, lots of movement, lots of weapons training, stunt training, which was re a really good way to get to know each other. When it came to the Battle of the Five Armies, Pete was filming for the entire period while we were um, learning the fight sequences in the stunt hangar. So we would learn our pieces and then come to set and show him what we'd learned so that he could sort of plan where to use it. So it was, it was like an overlapping process. It, but the length of the battle at the end was a really uh, an unknown quantity. It, uh, the way I describe it is like running a marathon and starting, but they don't tell you how many miles you're going to have to run until you're at the finishing line. Mm -hmm. If you were in Thorin, uh, what character would you like to be in, the, in all the Middle Earth universe? I think I'd like to be Gollum. <laughs> oh. I think he's one of the most fascinating, interesting yeah. characters that Tolkien created. And that voice is, you know, everyone's got a Gollum voice. Although Andy Serkis has absolutely defined Gollum and people try to do it. But I think uh, it looks like he had a lot of fun playing him. How would be your Gollum voice? Have you ever thought how would be your Gollum voice? No, and I'm not going to have a go. <laughs> uh, yes, nice try. Yeah, <laughs> I have to try. Uh, yesterday, Sean Austin and Brad Dourif talked about how passionate Peter Jackson is. So uh, how was you to work with him? How this passion affects the world? They say how oh, he controls seven teams at the same time, and he acts with you, and, and he always there. So. Well, well, first of all, I'm a, let me say, I'm a huge fan of Sean Austin and Brad Dourif. I think they created amazing characters in that movie, and it's because of their work that we are sitting here now, and, and Peter's work has been such a success. But yeah, he, it, I, at one point, I thought there were three versions of Peter Jackson. I thought there were three people, because he does the, the workload of three people. He, I think he sleeps for about two hours a night, at the, if that. He's constantly editing. He's constantly rethinking things. Um, He's an amazing guy, and he, his passion and commitment is second to none. And he was re-editing the film till, and till about the last few hours before it was delivered and premiered in London. So uh, he's, he's extraordinary. Well, we were very fortunate to have the movie here, to have you here. So thank you very much for, yeah. for being here at Comic-Con. Uh, how do you like the, the fair and the city so far? It's amazing. I, I'm really happy to be sitting in a giant yellow omelette colored chair. <laughs> yeah. um, yellow's definitely not my color. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's no, like you look theme. good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a theme for it omelette. Is. And, uh, <laughs> <join this. laughs> and the city, okay. how about the city? You're, it's amazing. I've seen so much of it from my hotel window. No, I'm serious. It's, um, it's, we, we went out last night, actually, and it's, it's, such a, it's a really beautiful city. I love the modern architecture, and I had one of the most incredible meals I've ever eaten in my life last night. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, your first time in Brazil? First time, but not the last. All right. Oh. Hope you come back soon. Me too. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. E esse foi o Richard Armitage aqui no estúdio do Omelete. A gente volta daqui a pouquinho.